Sports. I told you we'd be back 6 p.m. Um, Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain, 3 p.m. Pacific. You've got your host, Tremaine, and Sean. What's up, Sean? It's it's my it's best time of the year, March Madness, and you know we're gonna be previewing the selection show. Yeah, we're gonna be doing it live right now. We have thirty-two automatic qualified teams. We have some we have some buddies, you know, opportunity that's already gone. Several teams that are already gone. So I think that's something that's important to carry out. So there will be a couple moments of silence throughout. But we're going to try to bring to you the selections as they come. Right now, to kind of go through the broadcast of it, um, right now the bubble includes out of the ACC, Virginia and Pitt. It includes Oklahoma um, in the Big 12. They're announcing it, Tremaine. They're announcing it? Yeah. Well, 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 they were still broadcasting at the table. UConn is the number one overall seed in the East, playing 16 seed Stetson. Okay, they're already putting it out there. Okay. Are you on um, CBS or ESPN? CBS. Oh, then you're a little ahead of me then. And then the eight seed Florida Atlantic Owls. Okay. We'll face the nine seed Northwestern Wildcats. Oh, nine seed for Northwestern. Oh, wow. I mean, that is impressive for Northwestern. And we'll talk more about the bubble throughout the show as far as who made it, who didn't. So hold hold on tight, folks. I mean, yeah, you're ahead of me, so you're going to have to call them out. The five seed San Diego State Aztecs. Okay, that looks good. And the 12 seed UAB. UAB, um, I might have an early upset there between that 12 and 5. I do, too. The 4 seed Auburn Tigers faces the 13 seed. One moment. Yale out of the Ivy League. Yeah, I'm probably going with Auburn on that one. They are getting right into it. I'm a few moments behind. Um, Northwestern. The six seed BYU the Cougars. This is the eleven seed Duquesne out of the A ten. Duquesne is an eleven seed. Okay. Oh yeah, BYU's their t- the three seed the Il- Illinois just fresh off winning the Big Ten tournament. Right. Faces the 14 seed, Moorhead State. Okay, that looks good so far. That, that looks like a tough bracket. Yeah, it's a tough bracket. That no, B- B- y- BYU and Illinois get past. That's going to be a heck of a second round game. Both teams can score a lot of points. Yeah, I think the seven uh, seed Washington State Cougars out of the Pac 12. Okay. Faces the 10 seed Drake Bulldogs out of Missouri Valley. That's going to be a good game. Good 7 10. Yeah. It will be. The two seed Iowa State Cyclones out of the Big 12. And they face the 15 seed. South Dakota State Jackrabbits out of the summit. 
that is a tough bracket if UConn gets out of it. Iowa State, Illinois, BYU. Like, that is a tough bracket if UConn gets out of it. Auburn as the four seed, like, that is a really tough bracket. What are your thoughts, Tremaine? <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. I think Drake is a huge upset threat for Washington at um the um at the at the ten seat over seven. So I think that's like the biggest thing. I think that Illinois will take care of whoever comes out of that seven ten matchup so far, and I think BYU will take care of business and. Um, BYU, BYU Illinois is going to be probably one of the better second round games if yeah. that, that that holds. This yeah, is I, think one, I mean, I think like or Illinois would take care of BYU. I meant to say, and then um, the two seed Iowa was, State. I'm gonna have them going pretty far. That I mean, if UConn goes to the Final Four, this is probably the toughest bracket. I mean, you got Auburn as a four. On top of all the other, Iowa State as a two, Illinois as a three. BYU can score a bunch of points too, as well. But that is going to be a tough bracket for, especially for a number one overall seed. You tend number one overall seeds tend to have an easier path to the Final Four. But yeah, I'm probably picking Drake in that seven ten game. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at this updated version of the bracket right now as they simmer on it, and I think that right now, I mean, Iowa State, UConn, that means that North Carolina is that final one seed. Um, North Carolina um, also is going to get lucky, too, because, you know, there's not going to be a tougher two seed that exists in Iowa State who did win the Big 12, which was the best conference this season in college basketball. Um, it is interesting that only two of the teams out of the Big 12 are in this first bracket. So they're split up pretty evenly. Um, as we can see live right now, you have Grambling State waiting for their chance. JMU, Nevada, South Carolina, New Mexico, Nebraska, um, and Utah State. These are all teams that we know are going to be in the tournament, and they're waiting for their opportunity to be selected or essentially bracketed, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, but normally, I'm the king of picking 12 over 5 upsets. I, I mean, I do think San Diego State um, will move forward on that one. Um, although UAB is a big threat, I will say that. Um, I'm not exactly sure if there's going to be a formal bracket picking like each pick this year for me or if I'm just going to pick like the final two rounds, it just depends. Um, we're not doing a bracket thing at work. We do a different type of thing now that I do a new job. So like, I don't really, you know, unless there's a specific reason to, I'm probably not gonna fill out a full bracket, but I'll pick a final four, I'll pick a sweet 16 and on. Type of thing. I mean, I, I always pick a bracket. Now I'm probably not gonna enter anything, but like, you no. know, the people, people, there's people out there that pick based on team colors and mascots, and the they have better shot of picking a good bracket than I do. So right, I just, right. I just, I, I'm just of the point like I don't care about my bracket. I let, I'm just rooting for all the underdogs, just all the lower seeds. Yeah. So Sean, real quick, as we continue with this first bracket, they've not started the second bracket yet, but um, as we continue this first bracket, um. What? Who do you think is the sleeper in this first bracket? I think my sleeper is going to be BYU out as the six seed. They're just that they they are a high scoring team. They shoot a lot of threes and they can get hot. Right. Um. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know who could be a potential sleeper in this bracket? I'm not saying they're going anywhere. But you know who's a potential sleeper in this bracket who's, for me? Who's that? You know 
a team that um, was in that same 8-9 game last year, in that same, you know, area, Florida Atlantic, I think they're a sleeper. Um, if they get past Northwestern and then get past UConn, oh, I'm sorry, Stetson, you were my moment of the week last week. You're not winning that game. <laughs> and if you win and, the, 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 and now the South region, we have Houston as number one overall seed playing on Friday. Hey, Houston, which we need Houston to the, be in the South. Pacing the 16 seed Longwood. There we go. That's another L for 16 seed in the first round. The 8 seed Nebraska. Faces the nine seed Texas A&M Aggies. There's one bubble team. There we go. That's in. Yeah, like but bubble seeds are going to be in the nine seeds for sure. Although they were talking about them on the bubble, like they were, and but they did well in the uh, SEC tournament, so. The six seed Wisconsin Badgers. Hey, that's a good pick. Nope. Actually, wait that wait. That's no, that's five seed Wisconsin Badgers. My mistake plays the twelve seed James Madison. Ooh. That yeah. Be an upset. That is for sure an upset that we have to consider. Five twelve is where five twelve and six eleven historically is where the most upsets are going to occur. So, yeah, um, I mean seven ten as well. Um, Texas A and M, you know that that's a good spot. Their quad one wins have been heavily respected for them being in. And the Ford C Duke Blue Devils out of the ACC okay. plays the 13 seed Vermont Catamounts Ooh. of America East. Yeah, I think that they're going to move forward. The six seed Texas Tech Red Raiders. Okay. Thanks. This is the 11 C NC State Wolfpack. Okay. You know, they won the conference, meaning obviously they weren't getting in unless they won the AQ. Right. The three seed Kentucky Wildcats, which that okay. sounds about right out of the yeah. SEC. Faces the 14 seed Oakland out of the horizon. I didn't even know Oakland won the horizon. <laughs> I mean, that, that was an evenly matched conference. The seven seed Florida Gators. They're playing in Indianapolis. Yes, they are. Plays the 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 the, the ten the, the uh, first four game between Boise State and Colorado. <laughs> the winner of Boise State Colorado plays Florida. Wow! Wow! Boise State was on the bubble, and we didn't even know it. I mean, Colorado was clearly on the bubble, but I was kind of surprised on that one. The two seed, which is also in Indianapolis, is the is Marquette. Marquette yeah, I didn't think Boise State year. was on the bubble. Like, that's a little weird. Colorado definitely was. Yeah, they were even trying to escape them from the bubble, too. The 15 seed Western Kentucky. Christian Lander representing. There you go. There, we got a few Indiana players. So 
How's that bracket look for you, Jermaine? Man, so as we're waiting for the rest of it to load up because I am behind um, right now, I think that um, Nebraska's uh, Nebraska and Texas A&M, that's going to be a powerful matchup, 8-9 and nine seed. I think Wisconsin might be in trouble against JMU. Um, another Big Ten team caught an L from – um, JMU this season, the very first game of the season, um, Sparty, which we've not heard their names yet. Um, there is two more play in, or there's one more play in game that could feature them in there. Um, but I think they're going to be in. Um, Texas Tech, um, I think they're going to move forward and end the dream of NC State. Um, and then obviously that 10 seed Boise State and Colorado, I think Florida is going to take care of them. I do too. My team that I mean, I I think I think Houston has a pretty good path. If North, if Nebraska gets past a, a Texas A and M, that's that's going to be a per, that's going to be a heck of a matchup just because Nebraska can shoot the three a lot. Of course, Houston, Houston's like their 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 defense is very very good and pressures a lot. Team I'm kind of looking at if it's not Houston, it's Kentucky. Maybe. I mean, my sleeper, and you'll give your sleeper in a minute. My sleeper is, I mean, this bracket, I think, is a significantly weaker bracket than the other one, in my opinion. But I think the sleeper is um, looking at six seed Texas Tech. I think that's a sleeper, potentially. So yeah, we're going mean, to be head to head in that round. Right. Well, you know, like you, Big 12 is toughest league out there. They're going to probably get, what, eight teams in at least, you would think. Um, right. but like, yeah, like they're, I mean, they're, they're tough. I think Houston ultimately wins this bracket though, and goes to the final four. Yeah. I mean, I think so too. I mean, this is why you get to be, you know, a number one seed in this way. I just wish that UConn, the overall seed would have gotten, um, a little bit more, um, Obviously, St. Mary's, JMU, South Carolina, Nevada, New Mexico, and Utah State are all, you know, are all still waiting. Actually, JMU is not waiting, but I don't know why they showed them on the screen. But the rest of those teams are still waiting for their opportunity. Oh, yeah. Um, but we go and look back because obviously it's a commercial break, so we have a couple minutes. Um, one of the biggest things right now, there are some notable names that have not been called. That have been on the bracket I was going through before. Virginia's name has not been called. Pitt's name has not been called. Oklahoma's name has not been called. St. John, Seton Hall, or Providence name wasn't hasn't been called yet. Um, and Sparty's name has not been called either. And uh, Mississippi State, who um, will be into the tournament, we'll just see where. And then um, obviously the last team that is. Um, quite, quite waiting for um, a, an, um, an answer is the Indiana State Sycamores. Um, what are your thoughts on those teams so far? Obviously, there's only room for about a third of those teams I just named. but um, I mean, it was what I expected. I thought Boise was solidly in. That kind of surprised me. Colorado, you knew, was a bubble team. They were talked about a lot. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be tough with Indiana State to get in there. Like the past two days, there was just a lot of bid stealers. And I think I sent I, I sent you something yesterday where like 14 one seeds lost in their conference tournaments. Oh, 20. Lost. 20. Okay, 20. Okay. Yeah, everybody lost. Which we will be going through our predictions a little bit later in the show on which ones we got right and which ones we got wrong. Because this is a full men's college basketball day tomorrow i'll be right back here in the evening um doing the women's show as well um there will be times where we come on here alone to talk about our respective sports i might do a boxing thing every once in a while sean might do a wrestling thing every once in a while it just depends there i mean we have a lot of shared sports but there are some sports that we heavily follow like with me and boxing and him and wrestling that the other one doesn't 
engaging. Um, we probably won't ever talk MMA on here unless like we got to crack a joke about Dana White. <laughs> oh, 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 how about Jake Paul getting his butt kicked by uh, Iron Mike Tyson, 57-year-old Mike Tyson? Yeah, we probably do a show on that. Um, I mean, I, there's not much uh, I want to talk about on that. I'm not much of a fan for the Paul family. So, <laughs> hey, hey, Paul, but I mean, there's this writer named Amanda, Amanda Serrano who Paul put on. I mean, Paul does some good work in the tour of boxing, but we're back from commercial break. In the one seed out of the Midwest, the Purdue Boilermakers. Oh, what a surprise. And they're I'm playing so in Indianapolis, surprised. so there's a home game. <laughs> Basically. They played the a winner of Montana State versus Grambling State, who was in the first four. No! No, no, no. I want St. Peter's. That's who I want. No. You said Montana State versus who? Rambling State. Yeah, man, Purdue about the year. That, that was a gift. The eight seed, the Utah State Aggies. Hey, that looks good. This is nine seed TCU. These seeds are a lot lower than I thought they were going to be. I didn't anticipate TCU being a nine. You have them what as a seven? I, I, about an eight. The five seed, the Gonzaga, Gonzaga Bulldogs. Okay. Um, one cool thing before you mention the faces, 12 seed. faces the 12 seed McNeese State. Okay, well, Wade. Um, the cool thing about this part of the bracket is that the top half is Indianapolis, the bottom half is Salt Lake City, which connects the two of us currently. That's true. That may be an upset there, Mc, McNeese State or Gonzaga. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not willing to put that bet out there. McNeese has zero active wins, so I'm not. Betting on them. The four seed, the Candace Jayhawks. Which, okay, that's which, good. Which Mc, Kevin McCuller and um, Dickinson will both be back, plays the 13 seed Samford. Samford. Okay. Okay. Which yeah, they were that they got they were just resting Big Twelve tournament. They're like, we're a three or four seed. Let's just get ready for a tournament. Right, right. It's very interesting though. We're gonna have to wait to the final moments to figure out if these bubble teams are on or off. The six seed South Carolina Gamecocks. South Carolina, come on and raise up. I know those aren't the lyrics of the song. It's North Carolina, but let's say South Carolina for now. Faces the 11 seed, the Oregon Ducks. Okay, Oregon. The three seed, the Creighton Blue Jays. The Creighton Blue Jays. Faces the 14 seed Akron Zip. Zip, 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 zip them up. Hey. <laughs> the seven seed, the Texas Longhorns. They're a bubble team for a while and they got their stuff together. Faces. A winner of a first four game between Virginia and Colorado State. Hold on, Virginia and Colorado State? Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Those are the final four in. So, Virginia, Colorado State, um, Boise, Boise State. Boise and Colorado. And Colorado, <laughs> that means that officially six Mountain West teams are in the NCAA tournament. 
And the two seed in the Midwest region is the Tennessee Volunteers. Okay. Faces the 15 seed St. Peter's. Ooh, St. Peter's. Um, I don't think this St. Peter's team is as good as the last one. No. So what do you think of that bracket, Tremaine? I mean, I am really interested in the Texas and what's going to be a Colorado State matchup after the first four. And I think out of my first four teams, that's the one I got going to the Sweet 16 right there. Colorado State to the Sweet 16. That's what I think so far. They'll beat Texas. Then they'll beat Tennessee. Hmm, okay. Yeah, my interesting matchup. I'm looking at Gonzaga versus McNeese State. That that is my upset pick of this one. But I think my sleeper for this one. I know they're a three seed, but Creighton, the Blue Jays. My sleeper is. I have to go to the bracket because they only show half the bracket at a time. So I have another my page that has the entire bracket. So my sleeper. I would consider to be – my sleeper is going to be – I think Kansas is going to take care of Gonzaga. So I think Can, you, you said it earlier, Kansas is a little healthier. I think they're going to beat um, Purdue. If I think Purdue will get to the Sweet 16 against Kansas. I think Kansas will take care of Purdue there. I would – I would, yeah, I would say that too as well. I mean, Purdue – Purdue has a de- actually has a decent mat bracket, but Candace is tough. Bill Self, of course, has won national championships. Um, you, I mean, Candace has been up and down this year, but when they're healthy, you got, got Dickinson inside. McCuller is McCuller when he was healthy was playing like a player of the year candidate. Right, I, he was. That's the truth. Honestly, you know, and like la- last last year, they uh, they didn't have their coach, which is why I didn't you know self was having some health issues and they didn't go far. So I mean, when he's coaching, it's a different ball game. I mean, he's back. He is back. Um, like this is troubling. Um, there are some teams that are put on this list because according to like this bracketology thing, there are, you know, the work to do category, there are 16 teams for six available spots, but I know they're back from commercial break. So let's go through the last bracket before we go deeper into that. I'm still on commercial over here. Oh, you're still on commercial. Okay. never mind. I, they like tease. They did a teaser. So right now how I'm seeing it, is there are some teams that are um like you have to put teams at the nine and the ten and right now um we have northwestern that is in according to you know from their bracket so northwestern is in we have texas a and m who is in we're still waiting to see if sparty Oklahoma, Mississippi State um, are in, but it seems like to me, based on what came from the spot, is that either Mississippi State, Michigan State, or Oklahoma, one of those three teams are, are out, according to what I see on the bracketology system. So that is tough. And right now they have. Um, in the in the bubble watch bracket, which I love the bubble watch, but based on the bubble watch, they have as should be in the only team that's left that should be in is Mississippi State. So let's say Mississippi State got one of those spots, um, then that means Sparty and Oklahoma has one of those spots, and the other team is out because Virginia, Colorado State, Boise State, and Colorado are all on the bubble. But I'll actually. To be honest, they consider Boise State as a lock. So actually, no, Sparty and Oklahoma are in, actually. So this is so this is where we're at, actually. Sparty and Oklahoma are in. First four out. 
Pitt, St. John's, Providence, Indiana State. That's what I'm about to predict, unless a surprise occurs, um, because we are down our first four, which means Indiana State is out. That's what it is. So um, what are your thoughts on Pitt, St. John's, Providence, and Indiana State being the first four out? I thought St. John, out of those teams, I thought St. John's was in. Um, they got that big win over Creighton. Um, but here's the fourth number one seed, the North Carolina Tar Heels out of the West. North Carolina Tar Heels. And they're so playing in Charlotte. That's a home game for them. That's the life. This is the life. winner of the 16 seed matchup between Howard and Wagner. Howard representing HBCU land. Okay. The eight seed, the Miss Mississippi State. Eight seed Mississippi State. So we have them checked off in. And then that means Sparty is the nine seed and ten is Oklahoma seed. And they're playing Michigan State Spartans as the nine seed. Hold up. Who's the nine seed? Michigan State. Oh, yeah, they're in too. Okay. Um, it says I just got an insider record that Oklahoma missed the tournament, which means um and St. John's missed the tournament. That means either Providence or Pitt got in. So let's and keep the, looking out the, for it. And the five seed out of the West Coast Conference, the St. St. Mary's Gales faces the 12 seed Grand Canyon. Okay, Grand Canyon. Let's go. That's that's who I'm going with. Oh. that's who I'm going with. Grand that's your upset. Okay. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Michigan State got in as a nine seed. Oh wow! And four seed Alabama roll tide. Roll tide. Okay. Plays the 13 seed Charleston. I almost my friend that's texting me right now. I almost should invite him on because he he's texting about it. <laughs> <laughs> the six seed, the Clemson Tigers out of the ACC. Okay. This is the 11 seed, New Mexico. Okay, yeah, so New Mexico was going to, so basically what that says is New Mexico was going to be out if they did not win the conference tournament. That's what that says. Yes, the, I, yes. The three seed, Baylor Bears. This is 14 seed, Cold Gate, two face. Two face. Let's go. I'm waiting to hear from that 10 seed because that solidifies the tournament. One of my 10 seed is 10. 7 10 is next. Okay, let's the do 7 it. seed, the Dayton Flyers. Faces the 10 seed, Nevada Wolfpack. Oh. So. The first five teams out are Oklahoma, Pitt, St. John's, Providence, Indiana State. Those are the first five out. And the two seed Arizona Wildcats from the Pac-12. Wow. Wow. Faces the 15 seed Long Beach State. Okay, Long Beach. Get the beach going. They go into Salt Lake City. Let me find out. Yep, they're in Salt Lake City. Man, this is a wild in subway tournament. I <laughs> we will talk heavily about who is out in a little bit. What do you gotta say, Sean? Um this bracket, uh, this is an interesting bracket. I mean, I think that North Carolina gets through one one side of it, but the other side, 
Like you could see Baylor, you could see Arizona. Yeah. Alabama, you know, can get hot because they shoot a lot of threes and get out in transition. What are your thoughts on the West bracket? On the West bracket, I'm like distracted by, you know, the bubble. But um, <laughs> I think Arizona is a huge threat on one side of the bracket. I do think Alabama is a threat on the other side of the bracket. Um, I think they're probably going to meet up um, in the Elite Eight. That's who I got going. Don't be be afraid of Dayton, Nevada. You know, be afraid. Um, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I mean, I like Baylor a lot as the three seed um, coming out of that side. Them versus Ares versus Arizona and Sweet Sixteen. That'll be a heck of a matchup. Yeah, I agree. The beach at fifteen. Yeah, that's what I have so far. And they were and they were about to they're getting rid of their coach. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. He's about to get a better job. He's like, hey, we want you to stay. Well, too bad. I got, I'm going to a place that appreciates me that gives me more money. Big 12 and SEC with eight teams in, Big 10 with six, Mountain West with six, ACC five, Pac 12 four, Big East three, and so on and so forth. The first four out were it was Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indiana State, and Pittsburgh. The last four in was Boise State, Colorado, Virginia, and Colorado State. And who was that fourth team out? Pitt. Okay, Pitt. So that means St. John's isn't even a one seed in the bracket. Interesting. In the NIT, yeah. NIT, yeah. So very interesting. I thought um, Seton Hall was going to be in. Out of the flat, out of the first four out, I thought Seton Hall was going to be in. That is very interesting because, um, and that's where the extra bid came from because, oh yeah, Seton Hall. Okay, yeah. So that is yeah. So very interesting. I'm just like processing all this as we are going forward. Texas A&M, Sparty, Northwestern our nine seeds, MSU and TCU. And then the other 10 seed is Nevada. And then the other 10 seed is Drake. So that means, okay, so here we go. Um, Kind of like breaking this down is that Boise State versus Colorado State, um, or, or not versus Colorado State, but they're the um, final four teams in Colorado. Um, and Colorado State, I think this is a big sign towards the um, towards them not respecting the Mountain West. That's what this is. Because the Mexico would have been out if it wasn't for them winning the tournament because they're in 11th seed. And you got Colorado State and Boise State in the final um, in the final um, final four teams or the um, first or the f- final four in, and then um, the last four in. That's what it's called. And then in the final five, and you have um, Nevada on that list as a um, as a ten seed, which means that they were the they were the team, the last team without a buy. Think about that for Nevada; they were the last team without a buy, so they were like one hiccup away from being on the bubble too. And there was no way that they could have put three of those teams on, which is probably why they shifted Colorado down and shifted Nevada up because of that reason. So it's very interesting what this bubble is. They gave major respect to teams for playing tough schedules like, you know, Texas A&M, like, you know, Michigan State. They gave respect to that. So strength of schedule, winning big games, active wins is a big thing in this bracket being successful. That's like my takeaway, but looking at the first four out, um, Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indi- uh, Indiana State, and Pitt. Um, but also not on that list was St. John's, Providence, Villanova, Cincinnati, and Wake Forest, which we already knew Wake, 
Cincinnati and Villanova were all out. It's just that Providence St. John's. I told you St. John's was out. They did not respect that winning streak at all. Um, th- these decisions were already made but long before the conference tournaments, and that's the problem. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that take. But I think that if they are going to make decisions before the conference tournament, that needs to be made clear. And know that the conference tournament's used as a playoffs. But also, they don't want to be blatant about that because they don't want teams like Purdue and Kansas just sitting out of the tournaments either. Right. So, uh, you got your final four yet? or? Um, okay, final four. So, I have out of the East. I have Iowa State out of the South, or out of the, we'll we'll do matchups out of the West. We have also we I have I have Arizona, and I mean UNC. Like if Alabama does not take care of UNC and UNC gets to that elite eight game. Um, that's going to be Caleb Love versus his old team. If we go to um, the South, I'm for sure not picking Marquette. I'm going to go with Houston in the South. And then we're going to go with out of the um, the Midwest. That is, a t- that, is a, that is the conference where I have the least belief out of team, so I'm going to go with the person I have beaten Purdue, and I think that the bra- this bracket will be torn up, in my opinion. My fourth Final Four team will be um, four seed Kansas. That's an interesting one. I mean, I have... Let me pull up the bracket. Out of the West, I'm going to go with. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Baylor. Out of the West, you're gonna go with Baylor. Yep, I think that Arizona Baylor game in the Sweet Sixteen was gonna be a heck of a matchup. North Carolina, they haven't eaten like the they're they're. It's gonna be a tough one versus Alabama if both those teams meet because just because Alabama can, uh, they can score a lot of points quickly um but that's i'm going with baylor just because also because the, it rarely are you going to have four one seeds like that never happens most of the time it's one two seeds you may have a three seed or a four seed or a five seed um but i'm i'm going i'm going with baylor yeah okay who are you going with in the east um, I'll go Midwest. That's the next one I'm okay. looking at. Midwest. I uh, I'm going with Tennessee. I'm going I'm going with Tennessee because I think Dalton Connect has definitely been a Player of Year candidate. I know they kind of disappointed a little bit last year. I think that I think that matchup with Creighton will be you know Creighton. Both teams can score a bunch of points. Um, I don't think they're. I don't think Purdue gets out of it. Purdue. I mean, Purdue's may, is not is a team that's made for the Big Ten, like in conference season. But like, my question in, in, in on them is guards. Like, once you get in March, like the teams with the guards are the teams that go well, go far. Right. And I agree with you that they would lose to Candace in the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. Um. Who you got in the next bracket? Next bracket. Next bracket. I'm looking at the South. I got Houston facing Kentucky in the Elite Eight, and Houston winning the South. All right. That's our first matchup. Um. And then out of the East. The East. The East. Hold on. Uh, 
I'm trying to pull up a bracket. I'm... All right, I'll tell you the bracket real quick. I'll tell you the top four seed. UConn, Iowa State, Illinois, um, Auburn. The next spot, next seeds are San Diego State at five, BYU at six, Washington State at seven, Florida Atlantic at eight. I'm going with UConn. Okay. I'm going. I'm going with UConn. I think. I think they get their game in the Sweet 16 versus Auburn. Like, there's gonna, there's potential. There'll be a lot of good Sweet 16 matchups. Yeah. A lot um, of good, good matchups in the Sweet 16. Okay. Um. Baylor versus UConn. Who do you have? I got UConn. All righty. And then you have Houston versus Tennessee. I got Houston. And then UConn versus Houston? I got Houston winning it. So we have the same winner. <laughs> Who's the rest yeah. of your final four, though? My final four is Iowa State, Arizona, Houston, and Kansas. And then I have Iowa State and Houston for a rematch, and Houston will pay them back. Not, they will pay them back. So that's who I got. I know it's Big 12 heavy, but Big 12, in my opinion, was by far the best conference this season. Yeah, I, I agree. I uh, mean... Uh, Hold on one second. I, you're not talking about Indiana State. Okay, so they basically said about Indiana State, their schedule was not tough enough, even though teams in their own state don't want to play them. Um, before we go back to what you were saying, what are your thoughts about teams like Indiana State? Because Indiana State was the only non-power school that was on the bubble outside of Mountain West, of course. Um, what are your thoughts on Indiana State not being able to have a difficult enough schedule to be in the NCAA tournament? I mean, I can understand that, but at the same time, like there, I, you know, there's clearly flaws in the net because Indiana State is the highest net team to never make an NCAA to not make the NCAA tournament at 29. Yeah, but um, if I. I kind of figured the Valley was going to be a one bid league. Uh, I know IU, ISU lost a few in the in fe, couple in February that made it that way because um, they had a key injury to Jason Kent. Um, but I think I, ISU definitely wants to play some of these teams that, but like the, these high major teams are not going to want to play mid majors, even though, as we see now, that the the tournament selection committee heavily factors in strength of schedule, which means not just your conference, but uh, but non-conference and you, whether that's a head-to-head, -head, whether you have tournaments, which I know ISU plays in some tournaments. Yeah, I mean the big tournament they played in, they went three and zero, and they played Rice, Pepperdine, and Toledo. Two of those games were closer than they should have been. Pepperdine, they won 90 to 82. We know that Pepperdine was not a very good basketball team. And then Toledo, they won by two, which Toledo was the favorite for the um winning the Mac um title. But obviously, as you saw, um zip 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 them up one. <laughs> so I think that could have been an issue. They didn't really take care of these low teams as well. Um, I think that some other struggles on their schedule really comes down to, and when you get to in conference, that you beat Belmont by six on January 31st. You beat Missouri State at Missouri State by two. Missouri State was not that good this year. Obviously, the back-to-back -back losses to Southern Illinois and Illinois State, and then there were not you know, uh, and then obviously the game against Drake, which they lost very close, but, you know, it was a blowout for a little while. So I think that those are factors in Indiana State's schedule, you know? Yeah. 
And it's not not like, like I said, it's not like ISU doesn't want to. ISU clearly wants to pr- play more. I mean, they played Alabama this year. They played Michigan State this year, which were both teams in the field. Um, and then, of course, they did well in that tournament that you mentioned. But uh, when you're in a league like the Valley, most years it's going to be a one-bid league. Well, and the problem is, is that what game do you replace? And and what I mean is, is that you the games that you played were against IPY. That is an in-state game. You got to play that. Um, you had another game against Northern Illinois. That's a close five game. You got to have that. Um, and then you have Southern Indiana. It's another game you got to have. It's a close game. I think the one game they had control over was taking this Tennessee State game and flipping it for another power or, or like another mid-major game. I don't see very many mid-major matchups in this schedule. And, and the MAC, we're not talking about the MAC. MAC has always been a one-bid league, but a multi-bid league. Like if you think about like standings, you know, I'm thinking about conferences like Conference USA. I'm thinking about conferences like the American. I'm thinking about conferences like, um, you know, I, I'm thinking about conferences like even like the Ivy League that has like major competitive teams in it, which obviously that's hard to schedule. But like, you know, the Mountain West is another example. I think having conferences like that to kind of schedule up the Sun Belt, the, like those conferences, like it would have been nice to have a, con- a, a, a matchup against Western Kentucky. Um, Western Kentucky, obviously, is not in the Sun Belt, but, like, Sun Belt, like, a good example of a team that they could have played was, like, you know, James Madison or Appalachian State or um, somebody like that because that takes them to a little bit of a higher level, even though there's not much control in the schedule. But the real thing that this comes down to, to be honest with you, is the fact that Indiana State's conference is back. There has been three prominent teams that have left the conference in the last 10 years. That is Creighton, Wichita State, and Loyola. Loyola Chicago came to the conference after Creighton left and left before anyone else did. And I think that's the thing about Indiana State is that you have to come in and dominate the conference and make the conference want to do something, meaning you got to win a conference tournament and win three, four games in the tournament like Loyola Chicago did, like Drake did, like Wichita State did. They all won big in the tournament. Creighton. Yeah, Creighton, exactly. So, like, I think that's key for those three teams, and that's why they're not in the conference anymore. Indiana has to earn their way out of the conference, and winning the conference tournament is the first requirement. If we go to the Valley Conference Tournament winners, I'm literally going to look this up. Um... The MVC conference tournaments. If we go to Arch Madness winners, um, I'm gonna name the last winners. Drake has won it the last two years. Um, Loyola Chicago won it the previous two years. We know where they're at. Bradley won it the two years before that. And then it was Loyola. So in the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years, Loyola has won it three times. Bradley has won it twice. Drake has won it twice. Indiana State has been in one title game, and that was this season. Before that, the last time they were in a title game was a decade ago. This is where Indiana State's program can improve, is you need to be in title games of this conference tournament. You need to win the tournament, and because I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, a lot of this stuff that has to do with this tournament, and they won't admit it in the committee, is that they're taking in what has happened in past seasons into consideration when it comes to this tournament. It's a bias that everyone has. Indiana State just hasn't shown that they're a prominent program, which is why it's really hard. Last time you won it was in 2011. Before that, we're talking about 2001. Like, you have to win it more often. Creighton won it. Four, won it six times since then. Northern Iowa has won it five times since Indiana State last won it, um, or won it twice, of course. Um, Drake has won it four times um, since 2001, or three times since 2001. Wichita State has won it a few times. So, like, that's, like, the key thing, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's 
clearly these the teams that dominated well moved on to bigger and better conferences because you know more money and better chance to make the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and I think that's what's hard is that. I mean, you got a new coach now. If you're Indiana State and you care about getting out of the Valley, you got to do everything possible to keep that coach. Like, you got to throw the bag in there. But I think with Indiana State and the direction that they're going, I think they're okay with being in the Valley and just being there, which means you're going to have to let Josh Shirts go because he's going to be want to be bigger and better things. He's going to be wanting to play in the NCAA tournament, not – having to win the conference tournament in order to get in. That means the league has to be better, but they're going to poach teams out of the league. But Indiana State just has to become that. And you better hope that Josh Schertz wants to be a part of that. I agree. I think so. I mean, he came from uh, D2 and did really well in D2 before coming to Indiana State. And he's been um, – He's done well, and it's only his third year, and you're going to the conference championship game. But you're right; you gotta, you gotta win those ones and go to the tournaments. I, yeah. ISU has put in money for the facilities, though, so that's a positive start. And they clearly uh, got Josh Shirts was a home run hire. Of course, hundred percent. Um, one key thing too, I want to mention since um, since 1979, we're going to talk about the multiple seeds in the Missouri Valley Conference real quick. 1979, one seed Indiana State, 10 seed New Mexico State. 81 um, had two, 84 had two, 85 had three, 86 had two, 87 had two, 88 had two. So like those years during that time frame, you had multiple teams within the league and then you skip a few years and go to 94 95 96 they each had two teams that year 99 you had three teams and then 2000 2001 2002 2003 2004 5 6 and 7 those seven years in a row you had multiple bids and you had four bids in a row including southern illinois making it to six straight ncaa tournaments right um, they Southern Illinois made the six straight NCAA tournaments and then they fell off after that because they've not been to a tournament since. And then 2012, 13, 15, and 16, that was the Wichita State takeover. They made the tournament in all of those years as well as 2014 because Creighton was already gone. Um, and then Loyola Chicago and Drake in 2021. But most of these years, you had all these teams that were you know, at good seeds, and Indiana State didn't really get in on all of these. Like, the only years was in 2001, when Indiana State won the, um, when they won, they were, they won the Valley Tournament in 2001, and they were the last 14 in in 2000. So, like, never really showing where Indiana State has been able to be a five seed like Wichita State, or be a four seed like Illinois, um, Southern Illinois in 2007, or be an eight seed like Loyola Chicago, like that hasn't really been shown a whole lot. A five seed Northern Iowa, that's another one. Like Northern Iowa and Wichita State, one of them won the Valley, but they both would have got in without a win in the Valley. So, like, those are things that I'm keeping in mind when we're talking about Indiana State in their future. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you got to, at the end of the day, you got to win and you, you got to get to the tournament. Um, which will, they should be at the top of the Valley next year. We'll see who comes back, if they lose anybody to transfer portal, if they get anybody transfer portal. Because um, a lot of you, with the transfer portal and NIL, you see a lot of teams, uh, high major teams getting guys from mid majors and low major teams and filling a role. Like you saw it, like I'll give you an example Purdue got Lance Jones from SIU. Right. To be that third card, and he's he's another guy that can handle the ball and hit threes and hit big shots. Um, which is that's a bigger difference for them this year is they have more guys who can shoot it. Right. Um, the good news about Indiana State is is that um, Xavier Bledson, who has um, been mostly a bench player the entire time he's been here, but been a six man. Um, him and Jake Wolf, who 
Um, did not play a whole lot um, in 30 games. He played about 12 minutes a game. That's what you're losing from your team. You're losing 30 minutes a game. And that you divide that by five, you're losing six minutes a game per person, which means everyone is coming back for Indiana State. Like we're talking about um, we're talking about like the statistics standpoint, the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five leading scorers are coming back, which is a starting five. You gotta retain that starting five if you're in Indiana State and then build a bigger bench within that realm. If I'm if I am Indiana State, I'm telling you right now, CJ Gunn, go and get him. He's gonna be in the portal. Go get him. Keep him in state because he's gonna leave out you. Like I'm not really trying to like be negative here. I'm just trying to be realistic here. Like he's going to leave IU. So if he leaves IU, then I think that we have to just go get them as Indiana State. You know, I'm both Indiana State and I and IU fan. If they play each other, I ain't gonna have a horse in the race because I'm equally a fan of both teams. You know, right? Well, and CJ Gunn, he'd probably start at ISU, which well, would make that team even deeper. Well, you're not gonna take someone out of the starting five now. He'd be six man. Be like, hey, CJ, listen, buddy, you're gonna be our six man, and understand that. On our roster, we have Robbie Avila, who's a sophomore, who's going to be a junior. You have Jason Kent, who's going to be a senior. You have Julian Larry, that's going to be a senior. You're going to have, um, oh, Josh Shirt's son is on the team. That's cool. Um, you got Isaiah Swope, who's going to be a senior. So you're going to have three seniors next year. CJ Gunn, we're building you as a sixth man. This will be your team, your senior year. You'll be a junior next year. You'll come off the bench. You'll score. 15 a game, you'll play 30 minutes a night. But senior year, this is going to be on your back. So that's what I'd be considering if I'm Christopher Gunn and his dad and other people that are in his camp is that if you enter the transfer portal, please consider Indiana State as a place that call home um, because you'll have opportunity coming off of that bench. And trust me, if he has to start in order to play, one of those people who started last season, they'll come off the bench because those are high character guys in Indiana State Sycamore uniforms. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, don't we shall know. see. But in this day and age of NIL and transfer portal, who knows? Like, I, I, if he wants to stay home, that's probably a pretty good spot. I, he's not going to Purdue. I, he's not going to Butler. Like, no. why not? Yeah, I mean, I'm not bringing up something that's like stupid. Like, I mean, this is. A well thought out idea. I mean, I don't think it's gonna happen, but like, you know, see they're done. If somehow, some way, you're listening, and if you hit the transfer portal, we'd love to keep you at IU. I forget what all those other people said. I would love to keep you at IU, CJ Gunn, because you have the type of character I would want on a basketball team. Hundred percent. He's a stand up guy. He's a good guy. He's a great kid. He comes from good people. I want to keep CJ Gunn in an IU uniform. But if you want to leave, ISU is a great place you can go. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, okay, a couple more things I want to address before we get to our moments of the week because we can go all night on this. And Sean, you know, I, I don't know how long you can go, but I got a scheduled, um, I got a scheduled um, outing with Liz in an hour. I can go that whole hour, or I can go a few minutes. It's up to you. We can keep going. Oh, then let's keep going then. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about now, we talk about ISU. Um, I want to talk about something real quick. Patino, man, Rick Patino, St. John. I wouldn't say they're back, but St. He did well with St. John's this year. What are your thoughts on Rick Patino and St. John's, even though they're going to the not invited tournament? <laughs> I think so. I mean, considering what happened with him at Louisville and how, and then he built up Iona and they made the tournament last year. You knew it was only going to be a matter of time before he got a high major job and. His his style a ball, which he did at Kentucky, he did at Louisville is it, is conducive to St. John's because you yeah. have a lot of players in that backyard, and you know as far as I know, he likes to get his team pressure and press teams and turn them over and get them out in transition. Right. So I think that's a great spot for him um, in the Big East. Big East. 
is still up as a power conference. Like you have UConn, you have Creighton, Butler has done well, like Villanova has done well. You've got uh, you've got a lot you've got a lot of good teams and it's a good conference and they were on the they were on the doorstep of making it this year so yeah I mean if we look at St John I, you know we're pulling up profiles and stuff like you know our future shows will have graphics and stuff but you know we gotta get that follower count up you gotta get that subscriber count above fourteen for that to happen. Um, <laughs> But if we go to St. John's, like, roster, I mean, you have a lot of people, like, that are going to be leaving. They have set six seniors on their team. And I'm not sure which one of them have eligibility or not, but when you have six seniors on a team, it makes it a little bit hard to know, to predict the future. Obviously, they have to hit the transfer portal. But how does someone like a Patino maintain the success that occurred at a 20 and 13 record this season for St. John Red Storm? Yeah, like in a tough conference. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's just going to be tough. But I think key things on why they're not in the NCAA tournament is these factors. They lost at Michigan. They lost at Dayton. Even though Dayton is not an active loss. It's still not a good one. Um, Boston College, that's not good. And then you lose to Xavier. So that's already four losses that I don't consider as good. And then you lose to Seton Hall twice. You lose to Providence once. That's already seven losses to teams that are not in the NCAA tournament. That's why you're not in. You lost seven games to people that are not participating in this year's into or sorry, you lost six games to teams that are not participating in NCAA tournament and you like lost to a high major school. Come on now. Come on now, St. John's. Yeah, like if you those are all bad losses, which certainly affected them getting in despite what their conference record may have been. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing about St. John's. Um, I'm going to move on to another team, a team we're all surprised is not an NCAA tournament, Oklahoma and Porter Moser. What are your thoughts on them missing the NCAA tournament? Um, I mean, it was close, like you, you saw in the bubble. Like, I was more surprised with Seton Hall not making it. I thought they were in. I thought oh, they... no, we're going to go to them next, trust me. But, like, once, to me, like – reason teams like Oklahoma didn't make it in and Seton Hall didn't make it in is you saw you saw all the bid stealers and all the, these upsets going on in conference tournaments. Now, you saw yesterday NC State and Oregon both won their conference tournaments. Those are two teams that if they don't win those games, then you're you're going to see Seton Hall in. You're, or, or Oklahoma and Seton Hall were the first two teams out. So if Oregon and NC State don't win those games, those teams are in the first four. Yep. Um, do you want to know why I think Oklahoma does not deserve to be in an NCAA tournament? And you know my main conspiracy on this. Do you want to know why? Why? They did not have a winning. They did not have a five hundred plus record in their conference. That's why. For me. And but you know that's the thing I've stood by on it for years. You know that. That's true. That's true. Like I've not wavered from that. I don't think you should be in an NCAA tournament if you don't have a have at least a five hundred record in your conference, no matter what conference you're in. Period. I mean, or if you win the conference tournament, of course. Yeah, I agree. The um, Big Twelve being a tough conference, yes. So we go deeper in Oklahoma's schedule because, like I said, you know. I've done act. I have actually have never done an active record on Oklahoma. So we're gonna do one here live. Actually, we're not gonna do it live. I'm gonna look at their losses. They lost to UCF. That's one. I mean, <laughs> that's why you're not in the way tournament. You lost to UCF. Like you lost. 10 games in your conference. 
And if you'd have been nine and nine and twenty one and twelve, you would have been in, in the NCAA tournament over um, probably Colorado State, because Colorado State also was in the, at that five hundred in their conference. That's the difference. That's how close they were to being in the NCAA tournament. How close they were. And when you lose, when you lose six and eight, that also has an impact on you as well. Um, although you started off ten and zero and it was beautiful. Um, the only win out of those 10 out of tournament teams was against probably some small conference. Actually, no, none of these teams made it to the NCAA tournament. You did not beat any of those people that went to the NCAA tournament. And the first win you had over someone that went to the NCAA tournament was over Iowa State. And they were not ranked at the time. So that's something you have to keep in mind, too. So they just fell apart. I mean, when you are 13 and 1 and you end the season, 20 and 12, that means you went 9 and 11 in your last 20, which means you're not a tournament team. That's true. The next team on your list was Seton Hall. We're going to look at them real quick. 13 and 7 in conference. Why are they not in the NCAA tournament? Why? Why? In a tough league like the Big East, you're like, yeah, they should be. They should be in over Oklahoma, which Why? they should be the, – if they're – if Oklahoma's the last team in, like, what is their case more over Seton Hall? Why? This is terrible. They, okay, Big East, before I go to Seton Hall's records, I have one thing to say. Georgetown, I love you. DePaul, I don't necessarily love you, but okay. You got to get these two teams up out of your conference. Like, these are those teams that are catching L's every single week. You, you, you do know Ed Cooley's going to turn around Georgetown, right? Listen. He was a problem to wow and built them into a, in a good program. They're right, competitive in the Big East. Let's look at Ed Cooley real quick before we go to Seton Hall. Ed Cooley, my guy. Um, I don't know why you left Providence, bro. Um. <laughs> I mean, you move over to money. Money. You need to get that money at Providence. He did well at Fairfield. He did 13 and 19, 14 and 16, 17 and 15. And then he went and got a couple of those junior um, tournaments at the end of the season and went on to Providence. One losing record, 15 and 17, 4 and 14 in the Big East. So I, I get what you're saying, but it's going to take a little bit longer to get this Georgetown program together because it took him three seasons to make an NCAA tournament and then he made one for what one two three four five straight years and has never really been um great in the conference he's never placed above tied for third so he's never been in the top two and that was until 21 22 where he was um first and then he was tied for fourth last season at 21 and 12 and they made it to the first round but i mean 9 and 23 and 2 and 18 that's tough to overcome and i think that like georgetown if we go look at georgetown georgetown hoyas men's basketball um they last was in an NCAA tournament as an at-large team in in 2015. um that that bleep is gone um we go back. So John Thompson is third. We're gonna look him up real quick. Um, before we go to John Thompson the third, Craig Escherich was nineteen and fifteen, twenty-five and eight, nineteen and eleven, nineteen and fifteen, and then he had a losing record, and they told him to go home. <laughs> John Thompson came in the third. He came in nineteen and fifteen, twenty-three and ten, thirty and seven, twenty-eight and six. Um, at that point, like 06, 07, 07, 08, they had some big guy. Who did Hibbert. they have back then? Hibbert. Yeah, Roy Hibbert. Like, and Jeff uh, Green. Jeff, there we go, you know. And then after them, after they got up out of there, 16 and 15, 23 and 11, 21 and 11, um, 24 and 9, 25 and 6, and then it started getting bad. 18 and 15, one more in the subway tournament appearance. 15, 18. 14-18. And then it got worse. Patrick Ewing, 15 and 15. 19 and 14, NIT. 
15 and 17, they were not about to go to the tournament. 13 and 13, and they won the Big East tournament. And then 6 and 25 and 7 and 25 the last two years, including one year of not winning a single game in the Big East. Like, this is bad. Patrick Ewing, stop. But you know what? Before we get to Seton Hall, we're going to get to Seton Hall. Trust me. People, hey, listen, stop hiring. NBA legends who ain't coached anything, like especially the college level. Like I, like obviously Ewing po- coached at like the um he coached um like for the Magic and the Charlotte Hornets and stuff like that. But like you have to have a chief person in charge of your day to day. You need a chief person in charge of your basketball operations if you're going to be a head coach um, who doesn't have the college experience because this stuff happens. Hopefully, Ed Cooley gets it together, but right now, until he gets it together, I need to kick them out of the conference. And DePaul got to go regardless. I, ain't nothing you can tell me about keeping DePaul in that conference. I know they just hired Holtman, but didn't Holtman just get fired from another Power Five school? They did, and Ohio State bumped up the interim to the head coach. Jake Diebler is the Ohio State coach. Hey, Jake Diebler. Shout out to Jake Diebler. I can't even name John Diebler. Is there any relation to those two? They're brothers. They're bro. Okay, that, that makes sense. I was like, John Diebler, like, from Columbus? I'm like, okay. <laughs> John Diebler from Columbus. So Jake Diebler is from Columbus, too. Okay. Oh, yeah, he, he was like, I want this job. So I'm about to be. I know y'all got a under the table deal with Sean Miller, but I'm gonna ruin that. I got an opportunity. I'm about to take a dream and turn it into a reality, and that's exactly what Jake Diebler did. Shout out to him. No one's talking about Sean Miller in weeks. <laughs> that's true. It, it also didn't help that he also, you know, pissed. He went the six and two his final eight games. Yeah. Well, that happened, but also Sean Miller kind of pissed the bed at Xavier the rest of the season. Like, they did not finish with a winning record either. They were 16 and 17. Um, You were about to say something before I go to Seton Hall? No, you're good. Let's go to Seton Hall. All righty. So, Seton Hall, if we look at their schedule, they were 20 and 12, which now in this NCAA way, 20 wins is no longer good enough for you to get in because everything's so competitive now. You probably need 22 now. So here we go. You lost to USC. Like USC got some good wins. They got some good wins early in the season. You lost to Iowa. You lost to Rutgers. You lost to Xavier. They destroyed DePaul 72 to 39. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. And okay, yeah. Seton Hall should be in the tournament. Their worst loss was against USC. Everyone else, like, either was a conference opponent or had a winning record. Well, I don't think Rutgers did either. Yeah, they didn't look good early in the season. They looked good towards the end, but they didn't look good early in the season. I see why they've been left out, but 13-7 and seven in the Big East, they basically said, we don't respect the Big East as much as you think we do. That's pretty much what they said. We don't respect the Big East. You got to get rid of DePaul. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and they looked at the totality of the record, factoring in conference and non-conference, and you had some of those bad losses. Yeah, so before we get to our moments of the week, and before we get up out of here, because that time is coming, any last thoughts you have on the NCAA tournament, teams not, you know, going to the NCAA tournament, et cetera? Um, I mean, this is our Super Bowl. This is our time of year. I mean, this is what you and I live for. I mean, I got Thursday off from work. So what do you, what do you think I'm going to be doing all day, Tremaine? You're going to be watching the tournament. Um, I mean, I will. There's only three things I'm going to do: eat, use. No, four things: eat, shower, use the restroom, and sit my butt on that couch and watch basketball. Yeah, me too. I mean, I'm going to work, but, you know, outside of working, you know, I'll, you know, be watching college basketball. Um, So the NIT selection show will start um, 930 Eastern 
seven thirty Mountain, six thirty Pacific. So that will I will be watching that wherever that's at. Um, I think that um, that is where the that's where that bracketology will be at, and we'll see and talk about some of the NIT teams at the next show. Um, we have the women's show tomorrow, but we're gonna do the final NIT bracketology real quick. And the bracketology that is in place um, is that Memphis, Indiana, and Ole Miss said that they decline. Um, what is your thoughts on teams declining the NIT? I mean, they're already thinking about next season. They're like, we, you know, NIT would not help any of those teams. They're focused on NIL, the transfer portal, getting some of the pieces um, in place for next year's team and, you know, making sure the players you do have, like, because it's a two-way street. Like, you can lose players and you can get players at the same time. So, right. you no, know, for a team like Indiana, Trey Galloway and Anthony Leo have already said they're coming back, which is big. Um, right. I think Malik Renu will, will be back. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, the biggest question for them will be if McKenzie and Baco is back. If McKenzie and Baco is back, pair that with Malik Renu and Galloway, you know, you're a few pieces away from uh being in the NCAA tournament next year and I'm, honestly if you look at it a lot of the teams at the top of the Big 10 right now lose a lot of play, lose players so i know you have the four pack 12 teams coming in with Oregon, Washington, USC and UCLA but the Big 10 is going to be wide open yeah Big 10 is going to be wide open and speaking of the Big 10 this season Indiana was just cl was clocked as a five seed or like an unseated per team in the um, NIT, which means the fact that you went 500 in the Big Ten and you were unimpressive in non conference and you got a and you almost got the 20 wins and you were nowhere near the NCAA tournament. That which, is which absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah, which I have a problem with in that. Like, pretty much you're saying that you need to beat everyone non-conference by 20 and that the last five – the five games in a row they won didn't matter when they had – there were several teams that they beat. They swept Ohio State. They swept Maryland. They beat – in the tournament, they beat – they swept Minnesota. They beat Penn State. Like, so you're – and they also beat – you have the same record as Michigan State, and Michigan State is solidly in the tournament. Like, yeah, but – Like, there's no, per, there's no perfect way to do it, but – No, no, the perfect way is conference placement. That's the perfect way. Hey. You know, and you finish sixth and in a – you know, conference was down a little bit this year, but they – Towards the end of the year, they beat some teams that are in the tournament, and they beat some teams that are, um, you know, above – that were above them. And yet, like, I don't understand the net because there would be times where IU wins a game, but then they lose a few spots in the net. Right. And, and so I know they factor more than just the net once it comes to picking teams, but I don't understand it. Should they have beaten some of those teams by 20? Yeah. But yeah. you shouldn't – that shouldn't be that much of a factor into it. Yeah, and also, to be honest, like, you got to schedule a little bit better. You can't have seven by games. That's also another problem. Which which they will. Next year, they're, uh, uh, you will be in the battle for Atlantis, which from, my, from the field that I saw, they're going to have some good games there. I'm not of sure. Of course. I'm not sure what the rest of their non-conference is going to look like, but looking at Nick, the 2024 field for Battle for Atlantis, yeah, they, I mean, they guarantee three games there regardless of how many they win. So right. they're, they're going to get some, they're going to get some good competition off the bat. And that's good. So to go through this NIT bracketology real quick, obviously the one seeds that are locked in are Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Pitt and Indiana State, two seeds, St. John's. This is the bracketology, by the way. 
St. John's, Wake Forest, Villanova, Providence, three seeds, Iowa, Cincinnati, Utah, and Ohio State, and then four seeds, Washington, South Florida, LSU, and Georgia. That looks like a pretty good, it's going to be a pretty healthy tournament. Bradley's also slated to be in it, Syracuse, Princeton. Like, there are so many options for people to kind of be in. So uh, I'm excited for NIT Bracketology Show. Um, but real quick, before we go, what is your moment of the week in regards to Selection Sunday? Um, well, my moment isn't – it isn't one, and I know I mentioned this earlier, but honestly, with all those one seeds losing, just kind of the parody in college basketball. Right. Because I know we both picked Houston, but it wouldn't surprise me if a UConn won it again. It wouldn't surprise me if a lower seed got there. Right. You know, if, I, if, if Kentucky made a run, if a UNC, I know they're a one seed, but like, if a lower seed made a run because there there's going to be some upsets we saw it last year last year no one no one picked princeton to win their first game much less make it to the sweet 16. right and that's what i love about this part of the year i mean that first weekend is probably my favorite part because you see those upsets you see those teams making sweet 16. i mean rarely do you i mean the cream typically rises to the top but this ain't this ain't a seven game series it's you one and done if you ain't playing like you know a lot of these low major and high mate and these low major and mid major teams are veteran teams who have played together for a while and have players who can hit big shots and make plays right so i mean yeah. that's not one that's just the overall like the parody of college basketball yeah, I agree. I mean, and it's wild, you know, about those one seeds going out, knowing that it's just not, um, it, it's not really, um, it, it's not really something that, like, is guaranteed anymore. Um, my moment of the week in regards to Selection Sunday or, like, this past week really ties down into – uh, um, I'm going to let the door hit me before the good Lord split me with um, that coach at Long Beach State winning the um, winning the um, Big West and going to the NCAA tournament. I am hopeful that he gets a good job and that someone appreciates him because he gave so much to that school. He's there for 16 years and they're like, First year athlete Jordan was like, nah, I'm good. I, I I wish the best for him. I wish that Long Beach State could win a game in the tournament, you know? I mean, it's not impossible. They are playing Arizona. I mean, that would destroy my, you know, final four. But, you know, you beat yeah. Arizona and go from there, why not? Yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that. Dan Monson, he's been around. Uh, he was, you know, he first got on the scene with uh, Gonzaga because he was he was the first one who built them. And, of course, Mark Few took Gonzaga to the next level. And then he had a little bit of success and before bouncing around. But, you know, I, that that is that's a big – that's a – you know, that's a really good story because, like, honestly, before the tournament, they're like, oh, yeah, you we good. Well, he pretty much is like, well, I got zero pressure on me. I'm gone after this year. Let, let's just play. And, you know, and they played their way into the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's what this time of year is about. Yeah, the thing that's the toughest is, is that, and this is the thing that's wild, is that he went to an Elite Eight at Gonzaga, and the year before that, it was the NIT second round. Um, at Minnesota, he was there and had a winning record at Minnesota, not in the conference, but he had a winning record overall. And he went to four NITs and an NCAA tournament. Um, and then at Long Beach State from 2007 to 2024, he actually did really well in the last three years, but um, he had a stretch that did not allow him to do well between 2013 and 2021 
and then he recovered and won 20 games in 21, 22, and then 17 and 22, 23. And he's won 21 games so far, so he's starting to come back up. So I'm guessing the issues were bigger than his coaching record because so far he is a 500 coach overall. And then in conference, he's won 60% of his conference games. So this is a coach that's done a good job overall at Long Beach State. And the fact that he's moving on is sad, and I hope that he moves on to another wonderful school. Cal Poly has a job open. Um, Pacific has a job open. Pepperdine has a job open. So I think those are some good opportunities for him out West that he can take and engage with. And I hope that he does well, you know, either age 62 and, you know, and that's just really what it comes down to. He won the big West regular season last uh, in 2022, two years ago, number one in conference, won the conference tournament this year. This is not a coach that should be let go at this level, period. Oh yeah, I agree. I I agree. He's been around. And he's a. Uh, hopefully, he takes advantage of one of one of those opportunities that uh, you spoke about. Yeah, and I mean, four NCAA tournament appearances. He has had um, eight NIT appearances. Sorry, nine NIT appearances. Nine NIT appearances and four NCAA tournament appearances. I mean, he's coached every year the last. Um, the last 20 something years, I think that this is a good coach. So we got to, you know, do all that. So any last words before we go? No, no. I mean, it's March, baby, but where do I some March? Let's go madness. It's March. I should be back. Um, 8 PM ish, um, 8 PM ish, um, Eastern time, 6 PM mountain time, 5 PM Pacific. That's around the time I should be here on here live i will be going solo dolo against um talking about the women's tournament tomorrow and then we'll be back at it later in the week to recover you know to recap the first week or the first two days um we'll be back later so any last words sean no so this has been speaking the truth in sports see y'all later peace peace Alrighty, good show.